What's up, people? No, I'm not making a model of a future raid or anything like that for a sandbox demonstration. But that's just a kid project. But what I do have is uh, what I have so far as far as HF. For a single income family, it's kind of expensive and hard for me to get all the gear that I want to get this project up and running. So I'm going to have to do this the, the hard way or the only way that I that I could uh, muster so far and, th and that's to get bits and pieces here and there I've been offered a an antenna set up for HF uh, don't know if it was uh, donated or borrowed or whatever it doesn't matter anyway because I'm, I'm gonna respectfully decline because uh, I think the evolution of this project and my channel and what I'm doing here is is the whole process of prepping and all that and that's the financial part of it as well uh, financing your endeavors here and in my case HF and, and it's an expensive sort of endeavor here but since I don't have the cash to get antennas and stuff and the dream radio that I want I'm gonna go ahead and break out the military field manuals and build my own antenna specifically a dipole antenna it's an antenna that's been used for since the dawn of radio itself hundred plus years and it's a good basic antenna not much moving parts to it it's very basic and uh, I'm gonna start off this whole thing with that and just build my own thing string it out and see what the capabilities of it is and this is part of the materials for me to build that not going to do it in this video but it'll be you know a progression of releases of of my sort of uh, uh, updates and and whatnot like I said I've been offered antennas for for either loan or, or donation or something like that but uh, yeah I, I don't take donations and I don't take uh, what do you call it uh, help from anybody more so uh, being a leader by example you know if I wasn't doing the YouTube things this is the way I would have done it anyway like I said I'm gonna go this route here just doing it on my own and let me show you what I got so far and some of the ideas that I have for uh, stringing this stuff up this here is military grade or military field phone wire they call it WD1 or in the uh, European sector and also uh, down in Australia and New Zealand I think they call it DON10 D-O-N-10 and what it is is uh, a pair of uh, cables wires rather and this is one stripped out piece of it right here so they will be fused together but you can separate them for, to his, uh, individual pieces of wire a uh, uh, pair and each one of these has seven strands in them three of them is steel and four strands are copper so these are built for strength for sure and I could attest to the toughness of this uh, wire out in the real world so since HF antennas cost quite a bit I mean we're talking about maybe a hundred dollars on up to the four five hundred dollar range uh, depending what you get I'm not in that particular league at this moment so I'm gonna go hardcore and use uh, field expedient homebrew antennas in my case I'm gonna build a dipole antenna in the 40 meter range and 40 meters come out to around 7 megahertz that is the frequency band that I'm gonna use for Nivis or sort of intermediate range communications We'll get into that in more details later on. So I chose uh, WD-1 military field phone wires as my radiator for the antenna. This stuff right here. And my antenna is going to be somewhat... It's going to be around 60 feet of length. Between 61 to 64, 65, something like that. So I need a pretty strong sort of steady you know, wire for me to span that that across a couple of trees and you could probably use you know copper wire or aluminum wire and stuff like that but after about after 
sometimes I heard that it, you know, the copper is malleable, it starts to stretch. So if you, if that copper wire starts to stretch, it's going to change the resonant frequency of your antenna, uh, making it longer. If it's making it longer, it's actually going to be tuned lower in frequency than your desired frequency. More than likely, this is not going to stretch because of the steel that's in it. So we're going to test that out and, you know, whenever I deploy this out in my yard. And it's going to be there semi-permanently. And we're going to, you know, check up on it once in a while, see how it's doing. And uh, it's going to be an ongoing process. And as far as a transmission line or radio cable or antenna cable rather, I've chose uh, 14 gauge, 400 ohm cable for uh, my purposes here. And uh, they say for HF, this cable here has the lowest losses when, when you're using it as a transmission line. But, and also it's, it's a little bit more trickier to, to use. You have a lot of losses with coax cable, you know, the regular cable with the conductor in the middle and the insulator and the shield on the outside this is twin lead or ladder line there's so many names to it but this is what they used back in the day uh, this for me this is more cost effective and also uh, it would have less losses as far as uh, you know attenuation of your signal going from your radio to the antenna because it's going to be you know some many feet away from my house uh, at least you know X amount of feet up in the air as well so that's what I got so far is this these two components this here I had forever this is uh, this is a uh, spectral line or Dyneema about the same width as a uh, power cord but it holds roughly seven seventeen hundred feet uh, seventeen hundred pounds of, of tensile strength for this particular diameter so it's super strong so I haven't built it yet. Uh, sometime in the near future I will. Whenever I get some time. But in the meantime I was just experimenting with how am I going to sort of string this up uh, across a tree uh, permanently here and also take out with me out to you know hiking in the field for me to do some testing out there. And I wanted something lightweight, uh, readily available. Uh, just a, a a nice light high speed low drag sort of package so in the telecom industry we got this material here uh, this component here called a cable hanger or a cable hoist they go by both names and I got a couple of pairs here so what it is is, is this mesh here around your transmission cable this here right here and then you have this sort of location here to where you could shackle it up to a line or hang it up on a tower or something like that. So what it does is the more the more pressure or, or tugging sort of pressure that you apply to the line itself, the braid here will get smaller and smaller and constrict around the cable there. So so basically grabbing on to the cable there and, and not letting go so you can hoist the whole thing up in one piece without you know like a single wire or something or a single piece of rope stripping this little location where some of that grabbing power is distributed all along this particular braid here and all you need really is the, the braid itself the little shackle part that's up there and then like a like a tie wrap usually it's a metal clip there that, that that you sort of you know crimp down there but a simple tie wrap will do to to apply just a little bit of pressure here and that's enough for it to grab and constrict the rest of the assembly here this is the other end of it the other end of my dipole when I string it up uh, uh, between a couple of trees and as you can see you can move it up and down any way you want and when you're happy about the you know location that you want it go ahead and apply that pressure here at this point like I've said before and then it locks in there 
and that guy ain't going nowhere. So here I have the one end and the other end is uh, tied up to the uh, to the rafters and I'm going to go ahead and swing on this. You guys can watch me break my ass here. Here I am. I'm totally suspended. 168 pounds worth of uh, dead weight on this on this particular hoist. That right there, and it held. So that was my example of possibly stringing two ends of a dipole across a couple of trees. This one on one end, then I have the other one on the other end. But of course I'm not going to use this big old heavy thing. I mean I would need, like I said, 64 feet of this. And this thing is expensive. And it's not practical because it's coaxial cable. What I needed was my, my wire. My military WD-1 or Don 10 over there in uh, Europe. And this is what I'm going to use as my radiator. So with the spectral line there, this guy right here, it's not like paracord. It, it doesn't have an inner core with strands in them. It's just the uh, outer shell. Or the outer weave. It's more of a weave uh, of a line there. And this weave here is somewhat really similar to this sort of weave right here. As a matter of fact, it's almost the, the same thing, but just made out of uh, Dyneema or Spectracord, which are both the same thing, really. So here I have my my loop end over here, which will strap against a tree or another line uh, in between a couple of trees, just like this guy right here. Then you have the, the actual weave itself, just like this guy right here. And then you have your constrictor here on the other end to apply that sort of pressure there to constrict the rest of the rope around the wire. Just like my black tie wrap here for this uh, uh, cable here. So it's basically the same thing but with other materials, lightweight field expedient material there. So right here I have one end and I have the same makeup over on that end attached to a carabiner that's attached to uh, my rafters on my garage roof here. So let's see let's do the same test to see what breaks either the connection here with the cable or or the uh, wire itself okay this, this is where I'm gonna go ahead and do the same test here the audio on my regular camera messed up so there I'm applying pressure downwards and so far so good I'm on my tippy toes there so I got maybe 75 pounds worth of weight on the wire itself. And finally it broke. And it was a clean cut too, a clean break. So there you have it. It broke, but I didn't feel the uh, wire stretch. Like uh, if, if this was copper, you could somewhat feel the wire stretching as you apply pressure to it before it snaps. This didn't feel like it. It was just a, a, a clean cut. Uh, I would estimate maybe I, I applied maybe 75 pounds worth of weight on it. I mean, uh, my knees was hitting the deck uh, there, but part of my you know weight was was mainly on that uh, grounding rod there to you know to, to stretch it out, and it held. This part of it held pretty well my actual constricting uh, uh, rig right here as you can see there that's where the wire is uh, ending right here and what's nice about this is you know instead of making a loop there with the wire to uh, attach it to another line to go you know span across a yard or whatever 
it's completely straight I mean it's probably doesn't contribute much to the radiation patterns at all but uh, it's just one little thing going for it I guess but uh, this has held pretty well and looks like this is going to be the method of madness that I'm going to use out there in the real world to string my 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 antenna up